Hello students, today I will be discussing with you IGCSE chemistry past paper. This is paper six, alternative to practical. And uh, you know, this is May June 2017 series. And this paper has to be done within one hour. And basically, you know, this is actually 40 marks question paper. Okay, so let's get started with the first questions. <clears throat> so all of you, could you able to see the first one? This is number one. Let me first read out these questions and then we can answer it. A student investigated the rate of reaction between an excess dilute hydrochloric acid and magnesium ribbon. The apparatus is shown. This is the apparatus is shown here. Okay. It can be seen clearly to you. Show you first. Okay. This is the apparatus of reaction between acid and metal. Acid basically uh, hydrochloric acid and the metal is magnesium. Okay, so two experiments were carried out. The temperature was the same in each case. Temperature was actually same. <clears throat> then A, complete the boxes to identify the apparatus. So they have left the box for writing the apparatus name. So we're gonna write over there, clear? So what is the name of this apparatus? I hope it is well known to you. This is going to be the conical flask, and this is actually said to be measuring cylinder. Okay, so these two boxes were left, so you just filled with the name. <coughs> okay, now next is B. What is the question of B? Give one observation expected during this reaction. So during this reaction, what observation do you find? As in fact, you know that it is the reaction between hydrochloric acid as well as metal. Okay, magnesium. When magnesium react with hydrochloric acid, you know that there will be formation of magnesium chloride, the product and hydrogen gas will be produced on the other hand, right? So as hydrogen gas is producing, that means there you could observe the bubbles. Okay, or bubbling can be seen, or on the other word, you can say it is fizzing. Okay, fizzing and bubbles are the same meaning. You write either one. Clear? Now let me move on to the graphs. The graph were drawn from the result of each experiment as so. So then look at this graph. <clears throat> one axis the mention about volume of gas in centimeter cubed, another axis is left over. And there are two experiments, experiment one, this is the graph and experiment two graph is here, okay? Then what they asked about it. See, label the X axis of the graph. So we have to label the X axis. What is the X axis? Basically, X axis are horizontal line, right? Or vertical lines horizontal line, this, this line is x-axis. So here, what we take, we tend to take time. This is called time axis in second. And this vertical line is about y-axis. It is also said to be y-axis, and this is supposed to be x-axis. So just label this part, right? Time in seconds. <coughs> so, okay. So next, what they asked about. D, give the volume of gas at which two graph level out and compare this value. So look at it, you have to label these two experiments. Okay, so I'm gonna label it, so experiment two. So if you label this graph, you're gonna get it's about, okay, this is going to be the, level of graph for the 
<coughs> experiment two. And if you intersect this line with the volume of gases produced here, so you will get just about 80. Okay, so experiment two is 40 centimeter cubed, whereas the experiment one is actually 80 centimeter cubed. That means experiment one is how many times greater? Two times greater. I mean, it's double of experiment two. Is it clear for everybody? So let's see. So as for this graph, you have to answer. As we in fact found it after labeling, that experiment was at twice volume of experiment two. That means experiment was 80 centimeter cube, whereas the experiment two was only 40 centimeter cube. Clear? It's very easy type, right? So just why the graph label out the different volume? Why? Because different amount of magnesium was used. I mean, two times. Okay, two times as much the magnesium used so that you got it in different volume. Clear? Okay, fine. Then third one, the graph has been drawn again. Draw the curve expected if the experiment one were repeated using the same mass of magnesium powder instead of magnesium ribbon. So here they are asking, <clears throat> same experiment one to be repeated using same as of magnesium powder instead of magnesium ribbon. So before the reaction was in between magnesium ribbon, right, and hydrochloric acid. But now we are we are not gonna take the magnesium ribbon. Magnesium ribbon will have large surface area. Sorry, uh, ribbon. It is big size. It is large size. So that is a surface area. Surface area will be less. Okay. Surface area will be less. But magnesium powder form has smaller size. Size is very small. Size is small. That means it has more surface area. <coughs> more surface area. Okay. So remember it. The rate of reaction directly depend on the surface area. If you increase the surface area, then the rate of reaction also will be increased. Okay, so clear. So where is the, you can find the more rate of reaction, obviously magnesium powder than magnesium ribbon because magnesium ribbon has large size, right? So surface area will be less, but magnesium powder has small size. So more surface area. So more surface area, more rate of reaction, less surface area, less rate of reaction. So now look at it, if at all, uh, this experiment were done by repeating same amount of powder form instead of ribbon, then the graph will be coming in the same as the experiment one. But as we have taken the powder form, so we're going to get the stiff gradient. Okay, we will be getting like this stiffer gradient. Okay, like this, this gradient is known as more stiffer. More stiffer because of the powder form. Because powder form has uh, more surface area, so reaction rate also will be more. So you will get the gradients will be more stiffer as compared to experiment two. Okay, and this level will be same as it is. Okay, in this way you can draw this diagram. Hope you understood it. Next two, a student investigated the reaction between aqueous potassium manganate seven, solution A. Read carefully this, okay? Solution A and solution, I mean, two solution of iron sulfate, solution B and solution C, okay? So there are two solution of iron sulfate, one is B and another is C of different concentration. There has they have been taken different concentrations. Okay. Two experiments were carried out. Experiment one is a burette was filled with the solution 8 to 0, 0.0 centimeter cube of mark. Secondly, the measuring cylinder was used to pour 25 centimeter cubed of solution B into conical flask. 
a solution A was added to the flask while the flask was swirled and until the mixture just turns permanently pink. The burette reading was recorded. Then A, use the burette diagram to record the reading of the table and complete the table. Okay, so you have to record the tables. Here they have given the diagram. Which diagram? It is burette reading diagram. <clears throat> you look at it now, this is the 13, right? And initial already in the question, the men initial burette reading was taken. 0, 0.0 centimeter cube. Then what is the final here? Final is 13, right? 13 centimeter cube. So what is the difference? So 13 minus 0 is equal to 3 centimeter cube. Okay, this is the difference. Next experiment 2. Experiment was, experiment one was repeated using 25 centimeter cube solution C instead of solution B. In experiment two, the burette was not filled to the zero marks. We used the burette diagram to record the reading in the table and complete the table. Okay, so, use the burette diagram to record the readings in the table and you have to complete the table as well. so here burette reading here the mentioned initial one and final one in the diagram itself so you find it this is two mark and then it is one that means 2.1 the initial is 2.1 okay and what is the final it is 41 then 41.1, so it will be 41.1. Then just subtract it, we'll get the difference. <coughs> when you subtract 41.1 minus 2.1, we'll, we'll be getting 39. Okay, so 39 will be, so 39 centimeter cubed will be the difference of this burette reading. Clear? Now let's move on to the next questions. What they asked: Why is an indicator was not added to the conical flask? Listen, indicators uh, because there is a color change at the end point. You could see so once color is changed, so there is not required of addition of these indicators before the reactions. We add or solution C is the more concentrated. Explain the answer. So solution C is more concentrated because in the questions you got it here already in this two experiment we could understand the difference we got it right here and the final reading was 13 centimeter cube initial reading was zero so when you subtract you will get 13 so difference is actually 13 so this is basically solution b okay solution b is 13 centimeter cube Whereas in the experiment two, you got it. Here are, you can find it, the initial burette reading, final burette reading. So initial is 2.1, sorry, here 2.1. And the final reading is 41.1. So if you get difference 39. So 39 centimeter, this is for solution C. Solutions. So obviously solution C has more volume of this compound right so 39 centimeter is obviously more than 13 centimeter cubed of the sodium sulfide so that is why you can say that solution c is greater than solution is greater than solution b as a greater volume of potassium manganese solution a was needed because more volume so you can write as it is here I have written. Okay. How many times uh, next come to second bit? How many times more concentrated in the solution of iron sulfate? How many times? Just now I said it. Solution C was 39. Okay, solution C was 39, whereas solution B was 
13. If you divide 13, uh, 39 by 13, we'll be getting about three. So three times as concentrated. Okay. <clears throat> Next E, uh, the first bit, if experiment two were repeated using 50 centimeter cube of solution C, then what volume of A would be needed? So initially it was taken 25 centimeter cube. It is like hypothetically they are asking if at all experiment two were repeated in 50 centimeter cube of solution C, but volume of A would be needed. So when it was taken 25 centimeter cube, it's became double, for example, here we have 50. So that is why you can write the double volume of C was need. Why? Because the double volume of A was actually required for it. So it's going to be, it's going to be 78 centimeter cubed. Okay. So you write this double because it refers in the experiment two was used initially for 25 centimeter cube. And if repeated using this much, that means 25, two times of 50. So that is why double amount of A solution is required, simple. Second bit. So just the practical problems that use 50 centimeter cube solution C in the investigations would cause suggest a practical solution of the problem. What is the problem? Volume of potassium manganese solution was added would be greater than 50 centimeter cube. Okay. What problems may arise? It may it might increase more than 50 centimeter cubed of burette because uh, we tend to use the burette the maximum reading is 50 this can contain uh, you know what is the reason 50 centimeter cube burette diagram just do it here okay so just a schematic diagram in the burette basically we fill about 50 centimeter cubed of volume okay if you use this then it can cross or it can exceed more than 50 centimeter cube so that the solution is we need to refill again why because it if at all it reaches 78 centimeter cube then what we have to do first 50 centimeter cube we have to feel the burette because maximum is 50 centimeter cube our solution is for example 78 centimeter cube so we have to refill again understand we have to use more <clears throat> f give one advantages and one disadvantages of using measuring cylinder instead of 25 centimeter cube pipette for solution look in measuring cylinder advantages and disadvantages so this measuring cylinder we can do quickly okay we can measure quickly but one disadvantage is, is actually it may not be accurate will not get the accurate as we get it accurately in the pipette z how do you, the result be improved by taking repeated measurement so basically we take repeated measurement for the top i mean reliable values okay so can take average for more reliable so we'll get the result or that can be improved so what do you need to do take average take average for the more reliable now question number three <clears throat> two solid e and f which are both salt were analyzed solid f was lithium chloride li cl2 and tests were carried out on each solid. Some of the tests or observations are shown here. Okay, test on solid E. What is the test and what is the observation you can see here? Test on solid E, first test, a flame test was carried out on the solid E. So the observation was yellow color. Okay, test two, 10 centimeter cube of distilled water will pour into the boiling tube. The initial temperature of water was measured okay solid e was added to the boiling tube and the boiling tube was shaken to the dissolved solid e the temperature of solution was measured after one minute a use the thermometer diagram in the table record the temperature and complete the table 
So use the thermometer diagram here. You can see thermometer diagram. Okay, so initial temperature of water in centigrade and temperature of solution after one minute. So can you see here thermometer diagram? It is 20, 21, 22, 23. Don't temperature of this thermometer diagram. The initial one is 23. Okay, it is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So final is 19. So what is the difference you got it? Four will be the difference of temperature. So look at it. Initial was 23 and final was how much? 19. That means temperature is actually getting reduced, decreasing. So it's going to be, uh, it's refers to endothermic process. Okay. So now let's see this question. The solution was divided into two portions of two test tube of following test carried out. Test on E and the observation is there. Test three is dilute hydrochloric was added to the first portion of the solution and the gas given off was the tested with the filter paper dipped into the acidified potassium manganate. The observation was filter paper turns from purple to colorless. Purple to colorless basically as we get it here, this color, this is the test for sulfide. Sulfide test, right? Test four, then excess of sodium hydroxide was added to the second portion of the solution. So there was no changes. But they asked about B, the question is, what does the temperature change tell you about the process occurring in test two? I said that in the test tube, there is a temperature diagram. It was reducing from 23 to 20, sorry, 23 to 19. That means the, the difference of temperature was four and it was you know, getting reduced. That means it refers to endothermic reactions. Okay. Name of the gas given off in the test three. So as the test was for sulfide, so we'll get the sulfur dioxide test. And basically for the test of sulfur dioxide, we tend to take potassium manganate. Okay. We take potassium manganate so that the purple color will change into colorless if there is sulfur dioxide gas, okay? To identify the solid E, what solid is there? As we talk, uh, that's basically a sodium sulfide was there in that salt, okay? Sodium sulfide were there. So <clears throat> this is solid E is actually sodium sulfide or you can say sodium, okay? Test on F, complete the expected observation. A, a flame test was carried out on the solid F. What is solid F? Let me show you. They are talking about solid F. Okay, here is the solid F. So solid F is actually lithium chloride. Solid F is actually lithium chloride. So what they asked in the questions, let me tell you now. Lithium chloride. So solid F is actually lithium chloride. So you know, if at all you do the flame test for the solid F, especially lithium, so you will get the red color. So lithium will produce in the flame test. What color? Red color. Okay, you remember the color of flame test for the lithium. Solid F was added to distilled water in test tube. Test tube was shaken to the dissolve in solid F. Dilute nitric acid or aqueous silver nitrate were added to the solution. Observation was high, white precipitate. Why? So basically for the test of halide ion, okay, halide ions are basically chloride, bromide, and iodide. So for test of chloride, bromide, iodide, we tend to use which solution? Nitric acid and silver nitrate. Nitric acid is HNO3, silver nitrate we add, silver nitrate, AZNO3, okay? When you add this couple of solution to containing chloride or bromide iodide, various color will be formed. If there is chloride ion, after addition of these two compound, so it will be white precipitate, 
Okay, if you get white color, then that would be presence of chloride. If you get cream precipitate, that will be bromide. If at all you get it, yellow precipitate, then that will be iodide. Ion. So here, as we got it, F solid was lithium chloride. So here chlorine was present, lithium metal, of course, chlorine was present. So here we can test for chloride. So that is why when you add dilute nitric acid and aqueous silver nitrate, the solution observation will get white precipitate, white PPT. Okay. And other halogen test, bromide iodide, also you remember about cream and yellow precipitate by using same solution we test it. Clear? No. The last question is calcium carbonate and kaolinite are both white solids found in sedimentary rock. Calcium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to form aqueous calcium chloride. Kaolinite does not react with the dilute acid. You are provided with a mixture of calcium carbonate and kaolinite and access to the dilute hydrochloric acid. Plan an, in, in, uh, I mean, plan an experiment to determine the percentage by the mass of calcium carbonate in the mixture. You have to investigate. You are not going to write the exact answer, how it came and all. So you just need to write the procedure of this is basically the crystals. So how are you going to get the crystals in terms of filtration process? So what are the process to be done that you have to write over you? Okay. So as they're talking about <coughs> two mixtures, what are those? Uh, yes, calcium carbonate and Kaolinite. So first you have to measure the weight of the mixtures. What is calcium carbonate, which is also said to be limestone in other words, and it is a group of calcium carbonate, kaolinites. Okay, so first step is this. Secondly, what you have to do is add dilute hydrochloric acid until no fizzing can be seen. Okay, until more bubbles you will be seen. So until that, you have to add it so that it will be react. Okay, and third step, after no more fizzing is seen, once it stopped, then just you have to filter it out. So filtration process you have to do. Okay, just write filter, nothing to be written more than that because you have to write just a single, single word, the process. Then whatever the impurities in, in terms of residue, you get it, just need to wash it. Then fifth step, that residue to be taken for dryness. So you have to dry it, okay? The sixth step, again, measure, is there any changes of the weight? So that is why weight the kaolinite. Weight the kaolinite. And finally, as in this investigation, we're going to measure the percentage of mass of calcium carbonate in this mixture, right? So percentage of mass of carbon dioxide is basically, this is percentage. Okay, change in mass divided by initial mass into 100%. Maybe here I would write clearly about this, okay? Percentage, percentage of mass is equal to what change in mass, whatever the change you mass will get it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me write nicely so that it will clear. Change in mass. Here already I have written, so you just look at it. An initial, initial mass into 100%. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the final formula also you can mention over here. Okay, this is the way, this is the procedure where you have to write the last questions. Okay? <coughs> Sorry. So that's it for this paper six. Thank you so much. If at all you have any queries, maybe during the online classes, we're going to discuss it. Okay, student. Thank you. Have a good day.